among you, even though um, it would have been better if I could be among you physically. But uh, the times are what the times are, COVID-19 situation and everything. So uh, hopefully uh, the Zoom technology will fix it in a sense that we have a, a nice transmission here. So uh, the theme of uh, my lecture is the adoption of the Treaty of the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, TPNW. And um, so what I will do here is to uh, go through the historical background of the treaty, because the treaty has the intention to get rid of all nuclear weapons of the world, as you know. So I will give you uh, first a uh, historical background, why we are where we are. And then uh, I will uh, look into the process uh, to, uh, towards the treaty, TPNW. And uh, thirdly, I will uh, try to uh, very uh, superficially, because we, I don't have, we don't have so much time, go into uh, the, the treaty text as it is, uh, its intentions, aims, and so on and so forth. And then lastly, finally, I will try to look into the future. If this treaty has a future whatsoever, or if it's just a blind shot into the wood, woods, so to speak. Uh, so uh, the, the starting point of this lecture is, of course, then the Treaty on Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons that was signed in 1968 and open for ratification in 1970. Because this treaty um, was uh, very important because it was the first time we had an international agreement that would prevent further spread of nuclear weapons. Uh, so that's the starting point of this lecture. It's very central that we spent two or three minutes uh, and deal with it, the, the intention of the NPT, I call it the NPT's abbreviation for the Treaty on Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Because uh, 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 to, to the treaty, it's other, so to speak, arrangements connected, like safeguards agreements and, and so on and so forth. I don't go into details here, but this arrangement altogether is called the NPT regime. And uh, one article, one article of the treaty uh, we have to focus on, and that is the Article 6, because the MPT in itself had three main pillars. The first pillar, of course, obviously, was to prevent proliferation of nuclear weapons. That was the most important aim of the treaty. The second one uh, pillar uh, was to assist and help states who want to develop uh, nuclear power or initiate nuclear research. So the IAEA, the International Atomic uh, Agency, uh, uh, should help and assist states to embark on different kind of nuclear research. That was, so to speak, the, the carrot of this treaty, uh, to have as many states uh, uh, join the treaty. It was a carrot. Of course, the, 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 the flip side of it was that they have to give up nuclear weapons ambition, if that could be seen as a flip side. However, the third pillar, the third pillar, and that is the topic of this lecture, is Article 6. Because it says, as you see here on the screen, that the nuclear weapon states, at that time when the signing of the 
in 1968, it was five, so to speak, accepted, uh, recognized nuclear weapon states. And they, they promised, as you can see here in, uh, on the screen on the slide, that uh, they should undertake to pursue negotiation in good faith on effective measures relating to cessation, cessation of nuclear rep, uh, weapons arms race and complete uh, with the purpose of complete disarmament under strict and effective international control. And as we know, this has not happened, uh, not within the NPT regime, of course. Of course, there have been other kind of measures uh, uh, taken, uh, like uh, during the Cold War, Soviet Union and uh, uh, United States had different kind of arms control uh, agreements uh, in between them. And after the Cold War, as we know, Russia and the United States have uh, reduced the number of nuclear weapons from, roughly speaking, 70,000 nuclear weapons to about 15,000 nuclear weapons today. But nevertheless, Article, Article 6 has not been realized. And that has been viewed as a big, big problem because, uh, because states like Sweden, Germany, a couple of other states, Switzerland, for example, they signed and ratified the treaty, even though they had nuclear weapons ambition, but they were willing and accepted to give up their nuclear weapons plans. But at the same time, uh, some countries like Mexico, Sweden, a number of other states pushed for that it has to be an article in the treaty that says that the goal in the long run must be that all nuclear weapons should be uh, eliminated. And that became realized when the Article 6 was formulated. However, the nuclear weapon states argued during the Cold War, well, it's a good, it's a good goal, and we should all states strive for a nuclear free world. On the other hand, uh, due to the conflict between East and West, between the communist, communist East Bloc and the capitalist West Bloc, it's impossible to reach this goal as the world looks today. Disarmament meaning a total elimination of all nuclear weapons arsenals was deemed as an illusion from their point of view. Instead of disarmament, another concept term was introduced during the Cold War. And that was, as you can see here on the screen, arms control. And arms control is to try to design a balance of power in the international system where you have a deterrence capability between the two superpowers that could, in, in that sense, stabilize the world order and make it more safer. However, nuclear weapons must stay as the world looked, as it looked at that time. They were their argument. Okay. The Cold War uh, ended, as we know, Soviet Union uh, collapsed and we had a new world and the conflict between East and West was not there any longer. And therefore, uh, uh, the, the discussion in non-nuclear proliferation for us uh, uh, was very much focusing on disarmament, meaning a total elimination of nuclear weapons. And the uh, MPT system had an arrangement that every fifth year, the so-called a review conference should be held uh, every fifth year where important uh, teams uh, uh, and topics should be discussed and hopefully to solve different problems. And uh, at the MPT review conferences after the Cold War, uh, three of them at least, uh, in 1995, 2000 and 2005, nuclear disarmament became a very important issue and many states pushed for it. And as a consequence, the MPT Review Conference uh, 2000 came up 
with, with the plan and aims in 13 points how the goal of a nuclear free world could be reached. Um, but as you know, uh, the, the, the nuclear weapons have their interest and they were not interested in real terms to head in this direction. So in 2005 at the uh, review conference, they said, it won't happen. We're not interested. So, the, the, so to speak, uh, they killed that option uh, for for many many years. And not many years. Uh, I would say a couple of years because the the uh, issue disarmament stayed there, but it took other forms later on, which I will come back to. But it's important here uh, that uh, so many states thought it was unfair that the nuclear weapon state should have the privilege to keep their nuclear weapons arsenal, while others who had signed and ratified the NPT treaty could not do that. Uh, and Article 6 was not taken seriously by the nuclear weapon states. So that was a very unfair system. So it, the NPT in itself has to take other forms or maybe be replaced by another treaty or Seriously, the nuclear weapon states had to take Article 6 seriously. And we have to understand, um, now, in, in, as we uh, living in the year 2020, it seems like a pretty naive uh, project to get rid of nuclear weapons when we see new tensions between uh, Russia and, 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 and United States, and we have states like North Korea who are carrying out uh, missile tests, nuclear weapons tests. Iran is probably on the path uh, uh, trying to acquire nuclear weapons again. But we have to understand uh, the zeitgeist, uh, the atmosphere, uh, I would say, until 2010, 2009, up, up until 2009, 2010, because there was a lot of optimism in the air, uh, and even, even the, the commander-in-chief of the United States talked about getting rid of all world's nuclear weapons, namely uh, President Barack Obama, who in his speech in Prague 2009 uh, talked about uh, the goal must be to get rid of all nuclear weapons. And as you can see here, uh, that he referred to the special role of the United States because the United States uh, is the only state that has dropped two nuclear weapons and we, we, we have to push for this. Uh, so today he said, I state clearly and with conviction America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world uh, without nuclear weapons. So we should remember that uh, 10, 11, 12 years ago, even 15 years ago, of course, the atmosphere was totally different in terms of what is a reachable goal. Is it possible to get rid of nuclear weapons? Now it's a different story, of course. I think I'll leave uh, Obama's speech. Uh, and of course, this, the states who pushed for a realization of Article 6 was very, uh, were very disappointment, disappointed, sorry, uh, when the nuclear weapon states killed the 13 points to reach a nuclear free world at the uh, review conference in 2005. So uh, many states uh, came back to the issue uh, and, uh, and they uh, organized a couple of pre-meetings before the review conference of 2010. And at the 2010, uh, something called, uh, um, uh, not really called, it was argued along lines that uh, humanitarian consequences of a nuclear uh, weapons war has to be on the agenda. Uh, also, within the empathy system, at the review conferences, in different kinds of negotiations, we, we, we need to have the courage to look into what science says about uh, nuclear war, war uh, uh, consequences for the climate, consequences for food security, and so on and so forth. And we have to understand that that kind of uh, discussions and that kind of research 
uh, going on within the uh, MPT regime uh, system had not been allowed by the nuclear weapon states uh, before uh, because they tried to, to avoid that kind of wordings, that kind of discussions. And the reason was, of course, they were af afraid they should lose their privilege uh, uh, to keep their nuclear weapons as uh, they thought they had the right to do. But that, um, however, at the MPT review conference 2010, many states uh, uh, raised the voices and uh, said clearly, we, we, we have to go, come back to the uh, disarmament issue. And, and, and we, we have to di discuss the catastrophic consequences of a nuclear war. Uh, and we all have to stick to international law, including international humanitarian law, that says that uh, nuclear weapons should be uh, avoided and some interpretation pointed should not be allowed to be, be, be fought, so to speak. And not only states pushed for that uh, the word community, international community, uh, the MPT uh, state members, uh, partner, partners, partners to that treaty should head in that direction. Also, many, many civil societies, non-governmental organizations joined in and was allowed, not really to take part in the negotiations, but at least be a part of the, the wider, broader discussion such as the Red Cross uh, and other organizations. And they started to lobby, to lobby uh, with the goal that uh, the, fir the first priority must be a world free of nuclear weapons. And out of these discussions, stays pushing at, at pre-meetings for having the uh, disarmament issue at the agenda again, uh, had as a result that something called the humanitarian initiative movement emerged. And that included, as I told you, a broad spectrum of states, uh, state leaders, uh, diplomats, civil rights and peace organization. And it, they became very successful in their lobbying for having disarmament on the agenda. And not only that, uh, uh, bef before the next review conference, 2015, a couple of very, very important conferences were held where the conferences, uh, sorry, the, the humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons should be and, uh, and would be, it sh should be, and it also happened, the disarmament issue. The first uh, conference was held in Oslo, 2013, and then Nayari, in Nayarit, in Me Mexico, and in Vienna, where the consequences of a nuclear war was discussed. Civil societies were um, invited, and they gave their perspectives, uh, scientists, and so on and so forth. And also, uh, at some uh, of these free conferences, even the nuclear weapon states uh, took part, like United States uh, uh, and uh, United Kingdom, India and Pakistan. Uh, even though they were not engaged in the discussion, they, were, they sat, sat down and they listened and, and discussed uh, a, a potential way to a nuclear free world. And we have to understand at that time, even NATO members like Norway was very interested to join in and working for a world without nuclear weapons, which later became a problem for all NATO members and also for other allies to different nuclear weapons things. They said, come back to that later. And an organization that became very engaged and I would say very successful in their campaigning was the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. ICANN is called ICANN, the abbreviation. And ICANN also received the Nobel, uh, Nobel Peace Prize for the, later for their efforts uh, to work 
for this uh, goal of a nuclear uh, free world. And they uh, sat in uh, at the meeting, took part, gave their um, perspectives of what could be done and also raised flags of warnings, what we should know. For, for example, they pointed to there is no single organization in the world that have, has the capability to take care of all the problems, to coordinate what has to be fixed after a nuclear war. And, and the scientists joined in and gave perspectives how health uh, system uh, could work if ever worked after a, a major nuclear war and so on and so forth. And all these campaigns became very successful in many respects. I don't go through here uh, a, a, a lot of um, uh, ICANN's agenda uh, uh, because we don't have so much time, but I think you got the picture how they worked and they tried to uh, convince state leaders and also sat down with the nuclear, uh, nuclear weapon states, uh, state leaders uh, and so on and so forth. And all these movements uh, with, the, uh, with the strong humanitarian dimension, the humanitarian initiative, uh, resulted in uh, a pledge uh, that was called the humanitarian pledge. It was um, the uh, government of Austria that came up with this initiative, humanitarian play, pledge. Um, and the idea was to gather as many states as possible under the same umbrella to push for this uh, uh, goal of having a world without nuclear weapons. And that uh, the, the review conference 2015 has to deal with this issue seriously. And as you see here, uh, at the time, uh, 127 states supported the humanitarian pledge. Okay, um, the uh, review conference 2015 uh, became a very important review conference in many respects, uh, because shortly before the conference started, uh, 159 states had signed in and, 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 and expressed that they supported the humanitarian initiative. And that is an overwhelming majority of all states of the world, that nuclear weapon states must be serious about disarmament, meaning Article 6 has to be taken seriously. And the idea was here to put normative pressure on the nuclear weapon states to take real action to put normative pressure in the sense of making as many, many people of the world aware of this problem. And also to influence financial sectors to not invest in uh, nuclear weapons manufacture and, uh, and other activities leading to states that can be an ability to acquire nuclear weapons and so on and so forth. On the other hand, it uh, uh, unfortunately uh, the 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 idea to really push for uh, having a, a real program like we saw in 2000, where a program with 13 points were formulated to reach the goal of a world without nuclear weapons failed because the nuclear weapon states at the review conference 2015. Uh, ignored it totally and said, we are not interested in heading this, uh, this direction. And in fact, if you continue, uh, for, for example, both France and Russia argued, you are, in fact, jeopardizing the MPT system as, as a whole. Because if you push for this, it could kill the MPT, and that would lead to catastrophic consequences, they argued. Um, anyway, uh, the states, all the overwhelming majority of member states of the United Nations, for example, uh, and uh, all states of the world, uh, didn't give up. 
So they uh, try to work out other kind of uh, ways forward. So, um, um, so an idea uh, was to use the General Assembly in the United Nations as a forum for further negotiation, leading to hopefully a treaty. Because in the General Assembly, um, it's the uh, majority uh, votes that counts, not consensus decision. That means if a majority of states would go for a proposal that aiming to stop negotiation to banning the bomb, the nuclear weapon states or other states who are against it cannot do anything about it. Negotiation has to be uh, initiated. Uh, so, um, a resolution um, was formulated, uh, which would open, as you see here uh, on the slide, to negotiate a legally binding instrument to prohibit nuclear weapons, leading towards the total elimination. elimination. And the argument, uh, if you allow me to spend one minute on this, was uh, that the MPT uh, seems not to be uh, in the fullest, best shape, obviously, because the Article 6 cannot, ha has not been realized. And they argue, uh, along with the uh, humanitarian initiatives argument, um, that there, there is a legal gap here. Uh, and the legal gap means the international law does not prohibit the use of nuclear weapons, even though it's not a clear case. But it can be interpreted that in some cases, a state can uh, be allowed to use nuclear weapons in self-defense and so on and so forth. Anyway, that can lead to uh, catastrophic consequences. So uh, since the MPT seems not to be able to fix this in itself, uh, uh, the world need an additional treaty, an international which is capable of banning nuclear weapons. That could, so to speak, solve and fill the legal gap. That was the starting point of the argument. Um, and in fact, in uh, 7th of July 2070, uh, uh, the Treaty of the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons was adopted in the UN General Assembly. Um, as you see here on the slide, 122 states voted yes, and, uh, and one uh, state, Netherlands. And Netherlands is a NATO member and was the only uh, uh, NATO member or a state that, in a sense, has a uh, defense alliance with the nuclear weapon states uh, took part in the negotiation. Uh, they took part in the discussion, uh, but they abstained from voting in the end. 69 uh, nations did not vote uh, among them, all of the nuclear weapon states and all of NATO members, except the Netherlands, who took part, uh, took part in, 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 in the negotiations, so to speak. So uh, the result uh, that the treaty uh, will be open for signature at UN headquarters in New York from uh, 20th of September 2017. And that was this adoption was really uh, considered as a step forward. It had never happened before. Uh, and of course, the nuclear weapon states were not happy about the situation. And they started to argue, this time more strongly, uh, even the uh, United States and other nuclear weapon states joined in, arguing that it could lead to uh, uh, not only a weaker MPT, could also make uh, uh, the MPT system, the, the, the entire regime, collapse so to speak. Okay, the, what is the Ban Treaty and its main goals? Uh, first of all, we have to understand it took just a couple of months uh, to uh, have this uh, treaty pass through all the negotiation barriers and in the end uh, states voted for its adoption. It, just a couple of months and that became a strong argument against the treaty, because many states, even not nuclear weapon states, 
thought th this is too uh, fast track uh, to reaching uh, a free a world free of nuclear weapons uh, because the treaty it has its weaknesses they argue but i'll come back to that later on i'll, I'll skip that so you could say uh, the treaty in itself um, consists of two main aspects aspects the, the the first one is prohibition the treaty prohibits the development testing production stockpiling stationing transfer use and threat of use of nuclear weapons uh, as well as assistance and encouragement to prohibited activities so prohibition is the first main aspect the second one is then elimination uh, elimination, of course, should be the main goal, uh, according to the treaty. Uh, and that, in order to do that, they had different kind of formulation, wordings, uh, how it could be done uh, through kind of verification, national imp implementation, uh, IAEA IAA should play uh, a stronger role, and so on and so forth. Uh, and for the nuclear weapon states, if they decide which they, the, 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 the proponents of the treaty hopefully argued that they, were, they really then, uh, it, it would mean a, a time-bound framework for negotiation leading to verified and in irreversible elimination of all these nuclear weapons arsenal. Here is a more detailed slide about each article, about prohibition, Article 2, what each party should do, declare in terms of what they have in terms of nuclear weapons, Article 3. I, I don't go into the, uh, these um, specific uh, articles because it's too time consuming. Because I think you got the, the, the main message here that uh, the, 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 the most important thing to understand is the main aspects, uh, prohibition and elimination of nuclear weapons. Uh, however, I think I should mention that it says here um, that uh, treaty shall enter into force 90 days after the 50th instrument of ratification, acceptance, approval, or accession taking place. That means that 50 states, 50 states have to ratify it. Then it go into full effect. 50 states. And today, I checked yesterday. I think uh, there are uh, 44 states uh, that have ratified the TPNW. So if that is correct, uh, another six has have to ratify uh, the, 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 the treaty. It's not far. OK. So uh, goals of the uh, the treaty. Yes, of course, uh, uh, prohibition elimination in itself. Uh, as it says in the treaty text, but let me uh, try to widen the scope here a little bit because, first of all, I don't think that many state leaders, diplomats working for different uh, uh, countries truly believe that we will see a world without nuclear weapons in short term, even in not a medium term um, perspective. So I think, uh, even though there are, of course, uh, uh, many civil societies, uh, ICANN and other peace organizations who work very hard to really have a nuclear world, uh, a nuclear free world at place. But I would say the idea is here given how the world looks today with growing tensions and even conflicts between uh, um, major powers, uh, great powers of the world. And we see a shift, the power shift from the Western world, the United States to China, uh, where uh, many uh, argue that the deterrence uh, doesn't work as it used to work during the Cold War, where we had just two superpowers that could control each other and negotiate and check each other. We have a more complicated situation. And we also have 
uh, unwillingness by Russia and United States to stick to different uh, treaties and agreements. Uh, as you know, uh, the INF treaty that regulated uh, the deployment of uh, nuclear weapons in Europe, medium nuclear weapons in Euro Europe and in Russia, has been abandoned. And many believe that there's a called start, a new start uh, agreement between Russia and 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 United States, which has been one of the strongest pillar of the new security order after the Cold War, uh, will probably be abandoned because it uh, expires in January 2021. So, against this background, the idea here for many involved in this process have been to put a normative pressure on the nuclear weapon states to do something to act to get us out of this blocking situation, this unstable uh, security situation in the world. In other words, to establish and strengthening the international norm against owning and using nuclear weapons. And at the same time, they argue, the, the proponents uh, and the, the authors of this treaty, that uh, on the contrary, what the nuclear weapon states argue, the BNW will, in fact, strengthen the NPT because the NPT has, as I tried to explain to you, a legal gap. So this treaty will fill that gap. An NPT will stay as it is and be very strong, but the TPNW could, so to speak, solve other problems, the disarmament problem. Uh, and once again, force uh, nuclear weapon states to make progress in the disarmament field. Uh, sit down and nego negotiate uh, with each other, which is not the case today. Uh, Russia and the United States, they don't sit down and negotiate. They're not interested in, in it, as it looks for now. Um, so basically, it's about changing the discourse on how we think and talk about nuclear weapons, changing discourse to have on the agenda, and not only on the agenda, but of the outlook that nuclear weapons, even though we only have 15,000 nuclear weapons today, 15,000 nuclear weapons are enough to kill more or less all life on Earth if they are used. Uh, and if not all of the 15,000 nuclear weapons are used, let's say we have uh, a, a limited nuclear war between, let's say, Pakistan and India, it will lead to catastrophic consequences, not only in the region, also globally, because it will lead to drastic climate changes that will have uh, consequences uh, for the food product production in the rest of the world. And mil hundreds of millions of people will probably die according to certain research. I can maybe come back to that uh, during the discussion of the, after uh, this lecture. So it's about to change in the discourse. However, of course, there are still state leaders and organizations that believe that it's possible in the end to have a word free of nuclear weapons, using this treaty as a basic instrument to reaching that goal. And maybe not now, maybe 15 years from now, 10 years from now, maybe we have a different situation. And then we have this treaty and we have this strong support from the majority of UN member states. And we can come back to that discussion, so to speak. Okay, let's... Um, try to understand how the nuclear weapons states argue and how they view it. I mean, the treaty, its adoption, and all the, uh, all the movements trying to get rid of nuclear weapons within the empathy system. They argue, and especially Russia and United States, sure, disarmament is still an important goal. Of course, all of us want to have a word that we don't have any nuclear weapons whatsoever. Of course, of course. 
but it cannot be realized uh, in an international setting where 200 states sit down and discuss this, because this is, is so important and is so complex and is so sensitive, and it's, we, it has to be done step by step. When times, time allows for new steps, the you know, United States and Russia are willing to take that, and hopefully together with other nuclear weapon states. And as you have seen, uh, this step-by-step -step approach, they argue, has been very successful because in the 1980s, there were around 70,000 nuclear weapon states, and today we have, roughly speaking, 15,000. So it seems, and it's proved, in fact, they argue, that the step-by-step -step approach is the only way forward. Uh, and it has to be done through uh, unilateral and bilateral negotiation. We cannot have a multilateral negotiation bringing in all states to sit down. And also, they argue, sure, President Obama uh, talked about giving up nuclear weapons. Yeah, uh, we haven't changed our mind, and uh, we, we still have that goal, uh, the same goal as uh, Obama. And remember, he also, in the end of this speech, said, make no mistake, as long as these weapons exist, United States, the United States will maintain a safe, secure, and effective arsenal to deter any adversary uh, and guarantee their defense to our allies, including the Czech Republic and so forth. In other words, they argue, but Obama, President Obama said, Yes, a nuclear weapons free world, we should work for it. However, United States will be the last state that give up that option to make this transition as uh, peaceful and stable as possible. So, uh, of course, they are, uh, the nuclear weapon states are not interested uh, to, in, in return, sit down and negotiate on on uh, giving up their nuclear weapons arsenal within uh, a treaty like the, end, um, the, the, the treaty banning the bomb. So what about the future then? Yes, uh, the outcome of this treaty and the adoption and all the humanitarian initiative uh, uh, movements. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, it looks like, uh, as I told you, 44 have ratified it, and I wouldn't say it's impossible that we, the, the figure will reach 50. That means that the treaty will go into effect. But uh, the, we sh shall not expect the elimination of nuclear weapons to take place. Not now, not for, for many, many years. Uh, in the future, something else can happen a new window of, of opportunities can be there, but not now for the time being. The nuclear weapon states ignore it. They're not interested. They don't take part in discussions about it. Uh, but uh, you, you might then ask, is this worthless? Uh, have the, all uh, those efforts pushing for this been worthless? No, I don't think so, because I think in the, uh, the result, then it will be further, further uh, positive consequence in the future is that uh, all these movements, the treaty banning the bomb, will most likely strengthen, strengthen the norm against possessing and using nuclear weapons. And if you look into what has been done, uh, and you can see the results of all the lobbying campaigning, is that many financial institutes don't invest in nuclear weapons uh, uh, activities. And, and many states are believing that this goal of a weapons-free world, nuclear weapons-free world, should still be on the agenda. And, and some countries, capitals, big cities of the world, even though their governments uh, have not uh, joined the treaty, 
uh, capital, or, for example, Washington in the United States uh, has uh, endorsed the, the TPN uh, and W. And in Sweden, for example, the second biggest city, Gutenberg, uh, uh, voted, uh, I think, a week ago and uh, to, to support uh, not only nuclear weapons free world, but also that the government of Sweden should sign and ratify uh, the treaty, which is not the case. Um, so many, many things happen, uh, even though we, will, we, we should not expect uh, elimination of nuclear weapons in the foreseeable future. But a strengthening of the norm, we can see that already today. So I think I, I stop here, uh, stop here, and I'm interested to discuss uh, uh, the uh, ban treaty, its consequences, uh, its potential with you. Thank you very much.